When it comes to accuracy, mass doesn't matter. Welcome to another video of the Archery Education Series. This time, we're gonna talk about are lighter arrows more accurate? So how are we gonna do this? Well, first we need to make a couple considerations, assumptions. We're only gonna look at the mass of the arrow as the variable that changes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna assume that you can hold a six inch group on the lightest arrow. So we're gonna say that our 350 grain arrow at whatever speed it's coming out at, and I have two different example bows, and then we're gonna step up our mass and see, based on that angle that we're holding, what would our group size be for those heavier arrows? If we think about this from a rifle perspective, a lot of times we think of a sub MOA rifle. That means a rifle that can produce a group that is less than one minute of angle. That's what MOA stands for. A minute of angle is actually a measurement of the angle leaving the rifle. This angle is constant regardless of distance to the target, which is why minute of angle is very useful. So we're gonna look at it from an angle perspective. We'll find what is our angle high and low from our zero point. So if we were hit perfectly zero, we're gonna know the angle at which the arrow leaves the bow. Then we're gonna say, what angle would the arrow leave the bow if it hit three inches high? And then we'll say, what is the angle for the arrow to hit three inches low? We'll do this for the light arrow, for the 350 grain arrow. We'll use these angles to then see what our group size would be for the heavier arrows. So let's see what it comes out to. I'm gonna put some examples on the screen and we're gonna walk through this. The first bow that we have launches a 350 grain arrow at 226 feet per second. So that would be short draw length, short poundage type of situation. I held every other variable constant. That's to say the outside diameter of the shaft, the fletching angle, all that were, remains the same across every arrow. Now this is an impractical thing that you cannot do in the real world because in order to change arrow mass, you're gonna have to change arrow geometry, whether it's a, a bigger, heavier arrow, so a lot of times the outside diameter changes, the flight characteristics are gonna change because the spine of the arrow is gonna be reacting different to your bow. We can only really do this from a math perspective. So in the real world, if you're seeing a heavier arrow or a lighter arrow perform better, it's probably not because of the weight, it's probably more so due to how that arrow is reacting off of your bow, what fletching configuration you have, and variables of that nature rather than the mass. And I think we can prove that today. So let's do it. So for that 350 grain arrow at 226 feet per second, that has a degree spread of 0.1692 degrees to produce a six inch group at 60 yards. What does the group look like if we step up to 100, 100 grains more, so 450? The same bow, so we're gonna reduce the velocity based on the kinetic energy. We're gonna assume kinetic energy remains constant. So the velocity comes down to 200 feet per second. Using our initial variance for the light arrow, if we now we go to a 450 grain arrow, how accurate are we gonna be? The group size grows to 6.07 inches. 0.07 inches of difference between a 350 grain and a 450 grain. Does the group grow? Yeah, by 0.07 inches. Well, what if we go heavier? Let's consider a 550 grain arrow. So now we're 200 grains heavier over the 350 grain light arrow. That's traveling a whopping 181 feet per second. Holding a six inch group, that's what you would do with your 350 grain. Your group size grows to 6.10 inches, a tenth of an inch for 200 grains more of arrow weight. Feel very confident in arguing you would never notice the grouping difference in these arrows. Now maybe if you're holding tighter than six inches, but again, it's the percent change. So if you're holding a three inch, you're probably gonna be 3.05 or so 
inch difference in groove, meaning you'll notice it even less. If the slow arrow is less accurate, it's because it's not coming off your bow the same. Maybe that arrow is now too weak because you've loaded too much weight in the front. Maybe that shaft is just not as good of performance as the lighter shaft. Maybe it's vice versa. If you're having problems with the light arrow grouping and the heavy arrow groups better, it has nothing to do with the weight. It may be a tuning thing. It may be a spine thing. It may be that you're comparing it on a windy day. There is so many other variables that you should be concerned with rather than the weight when it comes to accuracy. But what about a high kinetic energy bow? What is the difference we noticed there? Well, for this, I did the same thing. 350 grain arrow, and I did the same analysis. I found my zero with that arrow. I then adjusted to hit three inches high and three inches low. Calculated the angle spread, applied that angle spread to heavier arrows, which are going slower. Here's what we get. We go from 350 to 450. Now the arrow is traveling at 309. You go from a six inch group to a 6.07 inch group. What if we go to 550? That is 6.12 inches. So that's an eighth of an inch bigger group. 257, that's 0.14. 6.14 that is. And that's, uh, that would be 300 grains more. You lose 0.14 inches of tolerance. So that's how much less accurate you are. You can no longer hold a six inch group. You can only hold a 6.14 inch group. 750, 6.17, 6.18. You'll notice it starts to taper. The reason for that is, is our change in velocity starts to get less. So when we're doing test downrange and we're looking at grouping, consider that it's bow dependent. Everyone's bow based on draw length, poundage, how you anchor and how you shoot is going to vary what your results are. We can only look at it from a very general point of view to see what does it show us? What does it indicate? And the math here indicates when it comes to accuracy, mass doesn't matter. Till next time.